What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Boleros. What an opening weekend. And today I have here with the Sultan of Sando, Mr. Gablim himself and Mr. Maui Yap to talk all about what happened during that weekend. Guys, so good to be back in niyo? Sando. Let's go! <laughs> polo Gab yung kasi polo si na, Gab. Yung polo yung nakakasakal eh. Hindi ako sanay. No, hindi sanay eh. Not in his <laughs> ano, element si Gab. Today he is in his element. Maui, ano masasabi mo sa opening weekend ng UAAP? Well, ako one word lang. Bitin ako. Just bitin. because I wasn't able to... Bitin. I wasn't able to watch any games live. Di ba? Live, Sorry. Oh, so, babawi uh, ako this week. Babawi, I hope to see babawi. you guys... Tama. And sakto yan sinabi mong word Maui, bitin. Kasi marami tayong mga commenters. We posted last night, hindi tayo magre-record. So we we're recording the following day, Monday. And I know you guys have been waiting to hear about our reactions to that um, Sunday triple header game. And since we've seen all of the teams play one game, we wanna do a segment that we've done before. We wanna overreact to the opening weekend games of the UAP. And we love to call this segment, It's Just One Game, But Blank. And then you have to fill in the blank. So let's get I started. I love this segment. I, let's say, <laughs> I, I've always loved this segment. It's <laughs> yung segment na to, kasi we can overreact, di ba? So Gab, please, uh, paki-clarify nga sa mga tao bago sila magalit sa atin sa mga hot takes natin in this segment. Okay, overreactions to ha. So, guys, to whoever's listening, I know some of you guys might be offended or might find these very controversial uh, statements that we're gonna make. But keep in mind, that's the point of this segment. Sad- They're supposed sadya. to be... Sadya to, sadya 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 overreaction. Sadya overreaction. Don't worry, some are gonna be positive, but there are some that are probably gonna be very... Um, uh, Joy, say, say this... Uh, hard to swallow. <laughs> yeah, puede. But I know overreaction again. It's just one game. We don't know what's going to happen the rest of the UAP season. So let's get started. And I want to start with Maui because I feel ko para hindi din mabigla yung mga tao sa overreaction ni Gab kasi mahamaya <laughs> may ano magalit na naman kay Gab. Maui, let's get started for, with you. For, for, for those who are wondering, uh, we won't really cover a lot of Ateneo and UP in this segment ah, because. Tama, tama. We did an extensive one-hour episode on Ateneo vs. UP really early in the morning, last Saturday night, Saturday evening slash morning. So we won't be talking a lot about Ateneo UP. Just a disclaimer. Yep. Baka mag kayo eh. check, so, check that out oh, na lang. The previous episode. Out, our previous, check previous check episode. The previous episode. Diba? episode. Tama. Uh, Maui, it's just one game, but... Yeah. Uh, actually, ang sasabihin ko talaga dapat, uh, and I think... Just one game, but I think Enyo is ready to take the next step. But with the uh, with the with the what happened during you know, the Sunday, it was the best game. Pala. I have to say that it was the best game of the weekend. Enyo versus Lasal, without a doubt. Without a doubt, you guys. Without, without a doubt, a doubt yeah. I think you guys would have to agree. Uh, that was supposed to be my prepared statement. It, uh, it, Enyo is ready to take the next step, but based on some reports we're hearing, it looks like Modi Asana. Could be out the whole season, diba? so they have to. It's still unclear if if uh, our friend Omar Jan can be a replacement. Uh, I hope he can be because it's just one game, palang naman, eh, diba? It's not like any news uh, doing something illegal, diba? We, we saw the Asana only for a few minutes, but uh, instead of that, uh, my hot take for this week is that FEU is not gonna be a final four team this season. Aray. Magagalit si Gab. Aray. Magagalit si Gab. Magagalit si Gab. Magagalit si Gab. Magagalit grabe, si grabe yung overreaction. Bakit ikaw pinili ko, Maui? Dapat pala si Gab muna. <laughs> diba? Uh, sa power rankings ko, uh, power rankings namin tatlo, the, if you saw the, our power rankings episode during the, during the end of the off-season, we rank FEU number three or number four. Uh, but uh, based on what I've seen, Despite having Sun Chambers, despite having probably the best rookie class uh, from all the UAP teams early on, uh, it looks like they could struggle right off the bat. Diba? I think I was talking to one of our subscribers, one of our listeners, si Jeffrey Timbang on, on X. Actually, the main concern namin, both of us, 
is 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 F, will FPU start a season zero and four zero and five? It's something that we hope doesn't happen. But uh, if they continue to play like this, if they continue to look rattled the way Adamson uh, manhandled them last Sunday, I do not think that they will make the final four. But they could be a sneaky team in the second round. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. just being cool. Lang. Uh, Maui, last last season, FU did not make it to the final four, but they can uh, kill some of the hopes of other teams, diba? They can destroy yung momentum, just like what they did to Ateneo last season. So that could be something momentum killer din tong FEU na to. So dangerous pa rin, but I, I like that hot take. Gab, go ahead. Actually, I had a similar thing. Uh, what am I, 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 I made a lot for, because it's one of my favorite segments. So I made a lot of statements prepared. But one of my seg- uh, statements was similar to Maui's. It's just one game, but uh, FEU's play calls are going are to be the most entertaining thing we see from FEU this season. <laughs> <laughs> you want know, you know, a picture? You want a picture? Well, uh, picture, big signages with numbers yeah. out, uh, everything. That's, 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 that's the, the first th- time. Yeah. Oh. That's a football daw, di ba? I think that's yeah. where Sean Chambers got the idea. NFL, yeah. oh. So I'll talk about something really creative and really yeah. fun, di ba? <laughs> I was watching it live. I was there, Peyton. I was, thinking, no, I was really just looking at the bit. What are those placards they're What are they up? doing? What yeah. are they doing? So, yeah. So that was my hot take. That that's going to be the wow. most entertaining thing we see from right. FEU this season. Because... My God, that uh, Adams and FEU game. I want to say you, you can watch it, but I actually pre- prefer it if you don't watch it because that was so ugly. That was. Uh, oh, by the way, sorry. by the way, admittedly, hindi ko na panod yung game na to. So sabi ko, I, I asked, I messaged Gabin Mar. Oh, hindi ko pa na panod. Kamusta? Don't watch it. Not worth it. Sabi ni Gab sa akin. <laughs> Una, yep. so, it go was, ahead, go ahead. It was Una, six to one. Yeah, in the fourth, in the first quarter. <laughs> yeah, you just said it was a group chat. That in, yeah. yeah, 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 I remember that. Oh, and at halftime, it was what twenty-five to twenty-one. Uh, it was a classic FEU game for those classic who don't know, FEU. Yeah, yeah, for the past two seasons, the lowest scoring games com- in both seasons both happened during FEU games. <laughs> I think this is a, another contender as one of the lowest scoring games of the season because this was horrible if if you like defense which to be honest maybe 5 to 10% of 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 basketball fans do like uh you can watch this game if you like miss shots you can watch this game because there were a lot uh, uh if you watch shot 21% in the first half uh Adamson shot 29% in the first half. This game was so ugly. I said every shot was not going in. So it's tough to say this, but uh put it up to rookie jitters, but I think the credit goes to Adamson. That was a defensive masterclass, and I messaged you guys. Oh, ye who don't believe in the Adamson Falcons, bro. That, Watch how this how disciplined they are on the defensive end. Their defensive principles, amazing. Grab it. A, a huge shout out has to go not just to their perimeter defense. We know how good their guards are. OJ Ojarikre, I think was the linchpin of this defense. Just look at the plus minuses. He was the the biggest plus minus at, along with Cedric Manzano. Just how much of a rim deterrent he is. I know last season, a lot of UAP fans and Adamson fans and us kind of were laughing at OJ because, you know, he doesn't have an offensive game, doesn't really have that touch of a big man. You know, he didn't he did so uh skilled in terms of offense. But I think he knows his role, diba? He, he knows na his job is to get rebounds, which he did, and to protect the rim. He had four blocks yesterday. So, uh, so yun, um, I love how this Adamson team played. And the FEU, my God, they could not hit any th- shots. They could not hit any threes. I don't think playing Cholo Ano Nuevo with, with VJ Pre and 
uh, Jan Ray in the same lineup is going to work. I really don't think so. I think they have to find someone else. The exit of Luke Felipe really hurt. Uh, for those who don't know, Luke, Luke Felipe, according to some of our subscribers, is not going to play this season due to academic uh, issues. So that hurts. He was basically his minutes were essentially taken over by Cholo Año Nuevo, and Cholo's not a shooter. Not a shooter, yeah, and yeah. He's not a shooter at all. He's not known as a shooter. He can, but he's not a very efficient shooter. So yeah, I think he they have to bring someone in off the bench who can shoot. Maybe an Adam Nakai, uh, ba? Maybe, maybe an Adam Nakai. He, he hit one three, one of the few threes that FEU hit. But he was in I the, think the only. The only uh, three they hit. The only one. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, what a grave you present just ng FEU. So maybe a lot of FEU fans are having nightmares and flashbacks to seasons prior because this was the story for FEU the past two seasons and why they didn't make the final four. Aside from Cyrus Torres, the past two seasons, no one on this team can actually make shots from the outside. Well, Jorik eventually, but no one. And that, and that was their problem. And it looks like it's going to be a problem again this season. Uh, Adamson just packed the paint, packed the driving lanes, got tips, got steals, uh, contested shots at the rim over and over again. And FEU could not hit from the outside. This is going to be a problem for FEU. Uh, they have to find someone from that bench. Uh, they essentially played the same rotation as in the preseason with the exception of Solo Anonuevo uh, replacing Luke Felipe. But they have to find someone who can shoot. Uh, I don't, I don't see them in Tamasimawi. I don't see them making the final four if they if they continue to trot this lineup, which, which lacks a ton of shooting. They were just zoning in on Jorik. They were running Jorik out of the three point, off the three point line, and uh, forcing him to take tough contested twos, which he did eventually in the second half. But this is uh, FEU cannot live with this. If if FEU cannot live with having uh, basically, subpar shooting. One for 21. Oh, even nightmares, I'm, I'm sure, for FEU fans for to the past two seasons. That, that, that's it. Agree on Maui. I, I, I had a similar version. Ko <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's the main problem of FEU. That's been the main problem of FEU the past few seasons. The outside shooting talaga. Losing Cyrus Torres and now Felipe also doesn't help. Uh, so yeah, but I also agree, Gab, yung kay Cholo and Revo, maybe it would be better to bring him off the bench diba? and make him create. Uh, he was mm-hmm. effective in that role some, we talked some about parts that. of last yeah. season. Yeah. We talked about that, that maybe maybe he could go off the bench. Uh, but just some final thoughts about FEU. I think this is something that you pay for when you do very well in the preseason. Diba? You're very heavily scouted. Teams prepare for you a lot more than teams who struggled in the offseason. Diba? You Kasi medyo nalabas mo na yung, as they say, pa, in, in cards, nalabas mo na yung alas mo ng off-season, nalabas mo na yung main strategies mo. So it's actually interesting to see how Sean, Coach Sean Chambers will bounce back, how the, this FU team will bounce back from this very disappointing uh, debut in the UAAP. Uh, I think they will do better. But the question is, will they start as poorly in previous seasons? Before we move on to the next pick, shout out to Popper8 commented dun sa power ranking video natin, came back to say, Adamson never fails to back up Gab. Masterclass against the hype rookies. Uh, obviously, I tell Gab, Maui you, and I, I, tell I, Maui and I Adamson ranked team. Adamson very low. <laughs> okay, moving Wait, on. Pero in, my, in our defense, Sam, we said that the final four days will be tight. Diba? Everyone tight, has oh. a chance. Aman, aman. It looks like, like aman, aman. after the opening weekend, it looks like that. Mukhang pwede. No? Okay, moving on. Sino sunod? Gab, ikaw? Ako? Uh, I'll go first. Let's, you, I'll be a positive Pete. Uh, Maui went with something negative. So uh, I'll do a positive thing. It's just one game, but the PJ Palacello breakout is here. Let's go. Oh my God, <laughs> PJ Palacello. What a game, okay. Gab. Okay, Sigur- Sigur- the weekend. Sorry, I have to say. So, siguro ng weekend, second to KQ, pinakamaraming messages ko nakuha, Gab, about your boy, PJ Palacello. Yes, di ba? So, 
again, overreaction. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm not saying that uh, it's definitely gonna happen. But overreaction, the PJ Palacello breakout is here because they don't have a choice. Now, let's put it in a, on a sad note. Modi Asana is not, uh, is probably out for the season. We don't know yet. As we said, if Omar John is, is gonna replace. But if they're gonna play all Filipino, they have no choice. But the play, PJ Palacelo at center, and what a game he responded in this team, uh, at, in this game. Uh, 15 points, 12 rebounds, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just bringing out the bag, attacking the LaSalle front line over and over again. Baseline jump shot, hook shot, bodying up Mike Phillips, and then a hook shot. Uh, Putbacks, active on the boards. He was tired. He was asking to be subbed out in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think Kenshin eventually subbed in for him for a short while. Then he came back in. But he was tired. He was working his ass off in this game. And I, I've i been on the PJ train. I, I'm probably the only passenger on the PJ train for two seasons. Uh, two seasons, yeah. Two or You're three, the driver. One season now. You're the yeah, I'm, driver. I'm probably the driver of the PJ train, but you saw his potential, man. He's a scoring option. I've been saying this since last season. This guy can score. He has a bag. He has soft touch around the rim, has an excellent mid-range shot. The three-point shot uh, hasn't developed yet, but he's taking them. He's been taking them in the pre for the past two off seasons. This is it. They I, I don't think Kurt Persiano is ready for big minutes. I don't think they can last with Kenshin Padrones going for big minutes. They will have to play small with four small guys and PJ Palacelo at center. Uh, goes without saying that the, par- that the departure of Joe Gulapa hurts them. Uh, yeah. You were solid in the used. preseason. Yeah, they could have <laughs> used. could have used a Joe Gulapa. If, well, who, they couldn't have known about that. Modi Asana would blow out his knee in the first few minutes of the first game of the season, the right? Of course, they wouldn't have known. But I'm here for the PJ Palacello uh, train, and and you looked good. Uh, for those uh, saying that Lasal struggled, uh, they were not playing well. I thought they played okay, but and you just played really well in this game, which is why this game was really close. They were leading. An- until the last few seconds of this game. They just happened to run into the KQ show. But and but overall, this NU team is still pretty pretty good. They've been pretty good in the past uh two seasons. I uh I listened to Nico Rocha's recap of the weekend games. You said he underestimated NU, our our friend Nico. Nakalimutan niya na magaling pala NU. And it, it's really um uh Easy to to forget to overlook NU. them, yeah. Oh, to overlook any because they've flamed out the past couple of seasons right? in the final four. But the score is still together and they're still pretty, pretty good. Uh Jake Figueroa bringing out just coming back early. I think there were rumors that he might be out for the first round. Came back first game, looked really good, man. Uh, you're, if you've been following Jake Figueroa and this NU team, look where he started in season 84 and look where he is now. Totally different player. Look at the development of this guy. Oh, he oh yeah, na call ko yan. Oh. <laughs> Kung ikaw ay palatelo. Oh, okay, and, ano, okay, uh, oh. Figueroa. <laughs> and I do want to say something about, about Jake Figueroa, about this NU team. Jake Figueroa is him for this NU team. Not only was he getting buckets on the offensive end, he wanted the KQ matchups. Every single uh, possession for LaSalle, he was saying it. I'm I'm taking KQ. You want a number one guy like that, diba? Right? Guy who just not only takes over an offense, but wants the toughest matchup on defense. It was only during when eventually Coach Topex put KQ at the five that they were forced to put Palacelo on KQ. But throughout that fourth quarter, Jake Figueroa just won. Wanted all the KQ smoke. I'm uh, I'm going on KQ. I'm taking him one-on-one. I'm going to shut him down. And that's what you want. I was so impressed with Jake Figueroa in this game. Jake Figueroa and Jake and, and, and PJ Palacelo. Uh, 
in my opinion, they got a short end of the calls in the fourth quarter. Maybe that's a hot take for some Lasal fans, but they did. I thought some fouls should have been called on some putbacks, some points in, inside the play. I think Jolo got whacked in the head and a call was not made. So some calls did not go, go their way. If some calls did go their way, I think they could have escaped with the win. No, uh, and but yeah, PJ Palacello, man, it has come, it has come. <laughs> na, you, you... Si bus driver ng PJ Palacello, <laughs> bus train, <laughs> diba? <laughs> Pasundo ako, Gab, pangi daana naman ako dito sa bahay ko sa PJ Palacello, ano, bus. Are you on the train now, Sam? Are you on the bus? <laughs> I, I'm a big fan, I'm a big fan of PJ Palacello. Ever since you brought him up two seasons ago, then I love his soft touch. Siguro what I liked about yung NU game na to is we talked about like the questions on NU nung, nung preseason since wala na si Kian Baklaan, di ba? And um, a lot of guys stepped up. Jake Figueroa stepped up. PJ Palacielo stepped up. Uh, si Manansala also stepped up and contributed. Hopefully, if we see like a holistic game like this from NU all throughout the season, kahit wala silang FSA, kahit wala silang baklaan, I think they can still be a title contender. They're, they're that good if everyone will contribute, oh, contribute as a team. Oi, okay, moving on. Uh, let's pick my turn to pick my overreaction. Um, it's just one game, but Tongkara is the best FSA. In season 87. I had so, that same thing! <laughs> I had the same thing! Oi! Ako rin! Maui, Maui. Okay, Maui din. Yeah. So, uh, agree, Sinasabi agree, ko na lang off-season pa lang yan. Sinasabi Actually, ko na lang off-season pa lang. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, eto si Tukara, this is yung sleeper pick ni Maui. Eh. I remember off-season pa lang, Maui kept saying, I really love this Tongkara guy. Um, Better pick than Osang. I, I know you picked him over Osang, di ba? And, now we know why, diba? Now we know why. If you saw the previous episode about yung best FSA prediction namin, we ended up picking Precious Mom away. But, so what better way to show to everyone na I'm the better FSA than to show up Precious Mom away in their matchup, diba? Obviously, Tungkara was the better FSA in that matchup. And wala siyang takot. He just kept attacking Precious Mom away. And yung footwork niya, we talk about Christian Manaytay. Work. We talk about Christian Manaytay. By the way, ang ganda din ang footwork ni Christian Manaytay sa game na yon. But may to I'm sure they, they're practicing together, Sam. Exactly. I'm sure they're practicing together. <laughs> feel ko, feel ko roommates to, nagpa-practice, they sl- sleep in the same room, ganyan. Kasi it's, grabe yung footwork ng dalawang to. And I was, I was so happy watching yung Tungkara play for UST. Kasi last season, walang FSA yung UST eh. So, so, Number one, he showed up Precious Momoe. Number two, why is Tongkara the best FSA? You look at the other top FSAs that we pegged. Another guy that we considered was Henry Agonane. He he did not have a good start to the to his UAAP career. Uh, PJ Palacello showed him up, diba? I think Mom, uh, Agonane scored like three points or He's something one out of like nine. that. Uh, something like nine. that. Yeah, one of nine. So, um, was not a good opening day for Henry Agunane. Hopefully, he bounces back. Um, the other guys na nakita natin uh, barely played. So, you talked about Yasana. Obviously, he got injured, unfortunately. Uh, si Udodo sa UP uh, played what? Nine minutes? Ten minutes? Didn't nine do minutes. much? Si Konate, we were hoping that he would um, do well, also did not do well. I think he was one of eight naman. Scored two points, three points, or something like that. Surprisingly, si Ocheri Crepa yung one of the better FSAs um, this opening weekend. Did it, we know Ocheri Crepa doesn't score, but defensively, he was very, very good. You, Gab, you mentioned it already. And I think we mentioned him nung preseason, yung defensive improvement niya. Obviously, Balogun. Fouled out in six, seven minutes. So, Bulok. <laughs> Bulok ng opening I, weekend. Maui, Maui, I was Krapin trying to be si nice. So, <laughs> it um, fouled out in six minutes. In six you know, minutes. When, I was, when I was telling that to my siblings, they couldn't believe. How can you foul out in in, you know, in, in, in six minutes, di ba? He, he needs to control that. But anyway, I don't want to talk about Ateneo. We promise we won't talk about Ateneo. But Tongkara is the best FSA. Anything you guys want to add? 
Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, go, go, go. Uh, okay. Uh, it wasn't just the offense. You mentioned uh, his footwork in the paint, soft touch from the mid range. We saw that in the oh, field oil. Yeah. There was soft touch from the mid soft range touch. and his defense, and uh, not just his defense. I do want to give a shout out to the UST and why I think they won this game. It was their defense. Uh, I pointed it out in our preview episode of, of the weekend. Uh, I wanted to watch how they would cover Precious coming into this game. And they gave Precious different looks. Every time Precious would catch the ball in the post, and he would turn three bodies around him. Uh, three or two bodies already there. When he would make the move to the baseline, they will come double from the top of the key. Just pressured, pressured, and pressured. Uh, Precious Momo way over and over again. He had a tough time. He had a few dunks, yeah, but he struggled in this game. Just the, the, the game plan uh, by Coach Pido or Coach Juno, whoever is calling the shots there, worked to limit Precious Momo way. I, I think, what? I think he only had nine points. I'm sorry, I don't have the stats with me now, but yeah, he 12 did, points. Did, 12, 12 points. points. Yeah, but that's low for a precious woman way who's basically has and, the ball and all the time. Hard-earned points yun, ha? Talagang yeah. pinaghirapan niya yun. Saka, so, bro, uh, oh. saka only seven free, free throws. Ah, oh, diba? tama-tama. And Maui, tama ka, ha? Below 70%, talo sila so far. So far, diba? <laughs> <laughs> Four of seven. Decent naman, decent naman. Four of seven. But yeah, they were able to limit precious woman way a lot, diba? When you see a guy... Who has the ball all the time and only has 10 shots and 7 free throws. And they did something right. And we got continue. Also what they did uh, something right. Aside from pressuring Precious Mong Wei, they did not let UE shoot. I think because that's what UE wants to do. They want to score through pressures or they want to shoot threes. The fact that uh, you, uh, UE uh, shot less threes then UST tells you all you need to know about this game. Because UE likes shooting threes. They got ran off the three-point line over and over again. And they didn't get into the flow of their game. Uh, if UE shoots... This is the same story for UE since last season, since two seasons. Ever since Coach Jackson Chago had the full season with this UE team, it's always been live or die by the three-point shot. And if UE does not make threes they are probably not going to win. And that was the story of this game. I think U UST did a marvelous job game planning their defense. Uh, on the other end, I think we'll, we'll go into that later, but the U UE struggled if they, can, if they did, weren't able to shoot threes and they weren't able to get the most out of Precious Momo Way. Kudos to UST, man. But that, that was a... Great game by him. Great opening game by him. And I think if you're a UST fan, you are hyped. Because finally you see something uh, worth you know cheering for. Like, oh my god, we have we're probably gonna gonna compete this season. And I'm hyped. I like what ako I saw from UST. I'm gonna go hype chance at UST, diba? Dalawang taon na isa isa talating taon na ako Mong, na, ano, na, 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 na tumama ka na Maui. It could happen. It could happen. Uh, yeah. Si Gav ve gave very good points. Uh, I think yung game plan nila to run them off the three-point shot was was their best game plan for, for this UE team. Tama si Gav, they only shot 17 free throws while shooting 32 uh, for their team. Uh, that's how you beat UE, basically. Shot, shot down Precious Momo way and shot down the shooters. But then everything else will be harder. I think another thing to note is that UE only had seven fast break points, diba? This team likes to run. This team likes to jack three pointers. Uh, UST did a very good job during this it during this opening week eh, during this opening weekend. And actually, uh, the main thing that surprised me was some players didn't get a lot of playing time, like Mahmoud and Estacio. Is this gonna be a trend moving forward? Uh, I'm actually more surprised uh, with Estacio. Kasi we, I think we picked him as one of our under-the-radar players for, for UST and he only played seven minutes uh, during the game. was a minus seven, didn't score a single point. So it's going to be interesting to see. Is this for real for UST or is this only uh, an opening day win? Kasi we saw them win opening day, I think, two years ago and then rack up 
13 straight losses. So we'll have to see a lot more. But but yeah, uh, yeah. Are you uh, just uh, I got I got the stats right here. Uh, USD shot 32 threes to UE 17. <laughs> That's something you don't see often because UE likes to jack Parang up balik those threes. Parang oh, balik balik tad. Tad. Ah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, nag-pick na tayo ng um, picks natin for overreactions, di ba? So, let's take a break. Let's do another, maybe let's do another round after this. But, let's talk about a new segment first, no? So, we're going to talk about our Gatorade Ballers of the Week. So, if you guys don't know, this is just like our Ballers and Boleros pick. But we're going to pick our Gatorade Ballers of the Week. So, in this segment, Gab, Maui, and I are going to pick a player, a coach, a team, or any X factor that helped propel their team to victory. Just like how Gatorade can fuel you forward. Oi, let's get started. Sino ang... Actually, ano to eh? Um, Thank ballers. you for the merch pala. Muna, Thank Gatorade. you for the merch, by the way, Gatorade. <laughs> Pero ito, Gatorade Ballers of the Weekend. Kasi wala, ano eh, opening weekend pa lang naman tayo, ba? So, I wanna hear, I'm curious, Gab, sino, where are you going with this pick? Kasi marami tayong pwede maging Ballers of the Weekend. But who are you going with? Well, let's step away first from some seniors basketball and give a shout out to some juniors basketball. Because... Uh, kudos, I, well, a part baller of the week or weekend goes actually to the UAP for finally getting rid of four game days <laughs> so that we can actually watch women's and juniors basketball, which is on the Filipinas Live app. You can yeah. actually watch. watch you can watch. Games. And they're posting yeah. highlights now of In women's and juniors na. basketball. Oh, we really watch through Filipinas Live. Baka naman, oh. Filipinas Live. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, juniors basketball. A special shout out to De- to De La Salle Zuber, the junior archers, who, a- according to Sir Matthew Lee of Tiebreaker Times, beat the National University uh, Bull Pups in the, the, their match up this past weekend. Uh, I think for the first time since season seventy eight. Uh, so. Kudos to the De La Salle Junior Archers, man. Uh, now, if you watch Junior's Basketball, baka magtaka ka, bakit ang daming familiar names <laughs> sa Junior's oh! Basketball? Yeah, the <laughs> yung reaction ko. L- lalo na sa FPU. Box score. Lalo box na sa FPU. Oh, Merong right. ano eh, no? Pingris. Merong Lassiter. Miranda. Apparently, there's a second Miranda who plays basketball also. Uh, a second Miranda son who plays basketball also. Cabanero in from USD. Cab- Apparently, yeah. Nick's Nina. brother is playing for the, ju- sa atin, for the sa, Tiger Clubs. Sa Ateneo, anak ni RJ Hazul. Nasa RJ Ateneo Hazul. Uh, so, if you, if you want to be shocked by those names, man, and see the future of Philippine basketball, go out and watch the juniors basketball for this weekend. But yeah, it's, it's great. It's great na juniors basketball is is in the spotlight. Now, admittedly, uh, we weren't able to watch all the games because, come on, man. Uh, we already watched three games yesterday. Medyo mahirap man- manood ulit ng basketball sa umaga. Kailangan na namin magpahinga after an early morning podcast with Sami and in Maui. So, just a huge shout out to juniors basketball. Uh, watch these guys. We'll be watching for some games. We, we obviously can't watch all because uh, <laughs> my, my, my women's and uh, men's basketball din tayo yung papanoorin. But yeah, they're my Gatorade Ballers of the Week. Juniors Basketball and the De La Salzobel Junior Archers. Congrats! Yeah, shout out, shout out to ano, the juniors players and the women's players. Cause and, and to the UAP. I love that pick, Gab. The UAP is a big winner for this for doing this. The fans are big winners for being able to watch some of these games. And it's really all about exposure, diba? Like c- creating exposure and giving like these kids and um women's basketball opportunity to shine as well just like the men's seniors basketball so love this move um hopefully more people will get to watch and support the juniors and the women's teams 
Maui. Sino naman ang yeah. magiging Gatorade Baller of the Week mo? Yeah, uh, actually si Gab, I just have to shout out also, si Gab mentioned the, the juniors division. I have to shout out one of the national team members from Ateneo, di ba? Si Casey De La Rosa had a monster game for the Ateneo women's team and they beat, uh, I th- if I'm not mistaken, UP was a finalist last year. He had 34 points, 11 rebounds. This is something you don't see often in the UAP, even with FSAs. So shout out to her. She's probably the Gatorade of the week for, for the women's division. For the men's division, it has to be JD Kagulangan for me this weekend. Uh, I think we've been talking about him the whole offseason and how he has looked like he's on another level. Like he is even better than he was during the previous seasons. Uh, I think Kagulangan was the main reason why UP was easily manhandled Ateneo. If you watch the Ateneo UP game, there was not a shoulder of doubt that he is the best point guard in the UAAP this season. Si Gab has been mentioning that even last season. Diba? Last season, I was still contending and saying si Evan Nelly had a say. But right now, it, without a doubt, I think it has to be JD Kagulangan. Uh, tama na. Tama na yung mga debate of, of the age of JD Kagulangan. I think I'm I'm tired of that. Uh, he's eligible to play this season and he's looking, he's out for blood. He, he's out for blood meat. Not that freak, not literally, but he wants to get this championship for UP during his last season, and I think this is the, that season that he could be that main guy for for UP. Is that alpha dog? Uh, I love what I'm seeing. He is easily a pro player ready. Uh, JD Kagulangan. Uh, there's actually a comment pa from one of our subscribers: Is could he be a dark horse MVP candidate? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, because UP will probably manhandle most of the teams in the UEAP, I don't think that he will be an MVP. He could win the MVP award. But if you're talking about an MVP player on paper, I would say that JD Kagulangan fits that bill. He's the most important player from UP who looks like who could dominate the league and probably probably end the season on number one. Yeah, I like I like that pick. Um, but you just a comment. The one the, the age thing is just a joke, bro. <laughs> if you just like it's to a meme. say it, it's it's, it's a, a meme. meme. <laughs> meme uh, but I, I do want to jump on the Casey De La Rosa thing, Maui, because I think he deserves she deserves a lot of shine for this. Is is there a Gilas bump for women's basketball now? No, oh, because yeah. she, Casey she De La Rosa the Gilas team, yeah. Looks like she's added a ton to her bag. <laughs> of offensive back. Now, I know she went up against an undersized uh, UP team who just lost their center. See, favor Ono. Yeah, favor uh, for you for the Out season. For the season due, to knee, yeah. uh, due to a knee injury. So, that helped maybe propel her numbers. But, if you if you looked at her moves, wow. <laughs> wow. I think she could easily run away with MVP this, this season. She was the MVP last back. season. Yeah, I think she says she'll run away if she continues to play like this. Uh, turnaround fadeaways, uh, dribble crossover f- from the perimeter from the top of the key. Uh, she's the future. I think when eventually she Jack Animam uh, gets up there in age, Casey De La Rosa will eventually take over as the main uh, as the main big for the Gilas women's uh, uh, national team. I love what I saw from KC. And also, uh, her teammate, the rookie, Owani. Uh, she, she was a hyped-up uh, recruit from last season. I think she played really well for Ateneo. So, some things to watch if you're an, a, a, if, if you're into women's basketball. Sammy, who's your Gatorade Baller of the Week? I, I, I was going to swerve for my Gatorade Baller of the Week, but I can't believe... Neither you of you have picked this guy, so I think I have to pick him. It has to be none other than Mr. MVP himself, Kevin Kiambao. Um, 22 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists, and the game winner to give his team the victory in a very exciting and closely contested uh, match against the NU Bulldogs. I'm sure you guys wouldn't argue with that pick. Um... What, what was great about that performance, Nikki KQ, 
it was a tight contest all throughout. And actually, most of the fourth quarter, or the second half, NU was leading. But every time NU tried to inch away, KQ just hit a clutch basket after clutch basket. I think he really kept this game close. And when it was take over time, KQ just took over. Um, yung <laughs> yung bantay niya kasi si Steve Nash yeah, diba? Steve Nash just fell and you can't give KQ that much room to and that much room that, that much time to take that three point shot um, KQ is just on another level and we're, we've been hearing news about KQ potentially receiving 36 million peso worth uh, contracts uh, from the KBL and I think with this game, it could be even more if um, if he plays like this and dominates like this um, for throughout the entire UAP season 87. What do you guys have to say about KQ before I actually ask you guys, sino pa yung mga quick runner-ups niyo for um, Gatorade Ballers of the Week? Yeah, I think without a doubt, without a doubt, KQ should be the Gatorade Baller of the Week. Diba? It was the best game of the season so far. It was... Uh, I think the only game that was tightly contested, really, uh, KQ was really on another level during the, that those last five minutes. I think he scored nine points, diba? I don't know if the game-winning shot is even the most impressive. I like that three-point play. That was a crazy basket by Kevin Kiambao. And oh, he was really fired up. He was fired up, diba? Every time he hit that crucial shot, he was he was shouting to the La Salle crowd. He was... He even gave some free high fives to players oh, in the this is a area. Fans, oh. I, I was so shocked that that happened. Uh, I think that tells you of the character of KQ and how he really is a, pa- a passionate player of of basketball and how he loves the fans. That's one of the main reasons why he decided to play again for La Salle this season, despite rumors of an off season contra- uh, of of pro contracts already being offered. Uh, yeah, uh, twenty two points, eight rebounds, and seven assists. This is probably gonna be. Similar to his season average this season, I think he has to carry that type of load for Lasal to be dominant without Evan Nelly and, and the other playmakers. Uh, it's a bit concerning for me, diba? KQ has to play like this for them to be able to beat an NU team who lost, who lost, who lost the Asana mm-hmm. uh, early in the game. Uh, they weren't able to impose their will. Uh, their, their, their very good front court, uh, despite them losing the Asana. I think NU outplayed them, out houseled them during the game. But KQ and Mike Phillips during that end game was just amazing to watch. Gab. Yeah. I, I think we've talked about KQ a, a ton already. PJ Palacello could have been a Gatorade Baller of the Week. We we talked about him. Um, yeah. yeah. But we've talked about PJ at, at length er, already. So I didn't want to go with PJ. Uh, okay. That's it. Okay, moving on. So let's get back to our um overreactions. Maybe we can do another quick round of overreactions. Um we started with Maui Kanina. So Gab, ikaw naman. Uh sino ang uh another it's just one game but pick mo. It's just one game. But Henry Agunane is a bust. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Just as a, uh, siguro in context, I was seated at the La Salle side yesterday for yesterday's game. Uh, I wasn't in blue, so I don't think people noticed that there was an Athenian seated at the La Salle side. But every time Henry Agonane got the ball, there was a collective groan from the La Salle fans. And you could understand why. Uh, they, Henry Agunane just doesn't have the offensive skill set yet to dominate in the post despite his height and, and his length. He is, I think, still raw on the offensive end. He has a tendency to take uh, threes and to dribble from the perimeter when his skills are not that polished yet. And my God, he, aside from some spectacular blocks, I think he was the reason, one of the reasons why Lasal was down for most of this game because he was a, a lot of plays were being called for Henry. 
And I think for Coach Topek's sake and for Lasal's sake, they have to stop calling plays for Henry. Uh, the fact that you have a 6'7 PJ Palacelo guarding you and you still couldn't convert on any of your attempts says a lot about you, Henry. Uh, maybe says a lot about PJ also. But you had a lot of shots near the rim being contested by a 6'7 guy. I, I think you should have converted there then. Uh Henry also has the tendency to get a ton of turnovers because he just doesn't read the defense well. So, you know, um, it's just, I don't see it. I think I, I, I've been saying it since the preseason, their best lineup is still Mike Phillips at the five. Uh, that, that's still something they have to go to. Um, agree, agree. It's not Henry. I'm sorry. Uh, not yet Henry, at least. But he just looks he, he looks so bad yesterday. Uh and I think LaSalle fans, even the Sal fans are pretty, are pretty frustrated with him. It, it, it didn't look good. It has not looked good at times. And I think really think they have when it comes down to it, they have to go with uh Raven Raven Gonzalez and a Mike Phillips uh center rotation. I uh, I think they have to do the bright nuanco treatment. To Henry Agonane and just make him an emergency big because he really did not look good. So again, there's an overreaction. Yeah. Don't kill me for for saying an overreaction. But <laughs> Henry Agonane looks like a boss after one. Yeah, he looked. Yeah. he looked lost. Mm. I was gonna say lang just to to add. Um, if there's a team that can afford to not play their FSA, it's Lasal. Um, last year, that's sort of what they did. They do have Mike Phillips and Raven Raven Gonzalez. So, um, Henry Agunane still has a chance to bounce back. Because there's not a lot of pressure for him to play because they have a lot of other talented big men in the team. It's not like, let's say, Ateneo that sorely needs a big man to play, diba? a big body to play. So, yun, Maui. Yeah, actually, uh, yun lang. I, I I agree with both of your takes regarding Agunane. Probably not. Gab is correct. Phillips could be that best five for them. And si Gonzalez, Cortez could could actually look for minutes, more minutes. Diba? Because we were concerned that maybe he'll not get at, uh, consistent minutes. But it looks like Agunane is lost. Uh, but this is the first game. Maybe it's the bright lights. Maybe it's the UAAP. We don't know if he'll be able to bounce back. Uh, but I guess the bright side is this is the first game of the season. He at times, because during the off season he looked dominant, but at times he also looked raw and lost. Uh, so maybe they'll have to experiment with this throughout the season. I'm interested to see how he fares against UP, diba? who bolstered their front court lineup. Uh, if he plays like this against UP, then he'll definitely ride the bench. Diba? Si, Gabby's right. He only played against basically Palacelo during this game. When you're up against a better front court like UP. You're gonna be up against Aguna. You're gonna be up against QMB. You're gonna be up against Stevens. You're gonna be up against Ododo and Alter. These guys are pro- more proven, diba? I mean, it's only Palacelo that gave him a problem during this game. Uh, I'm excited to see if he'll be able to bounce back. Because we also called him, eh, diba? As a, a potential top FHA, and it, after the first game, doesn't look good. Bolero tayo for that. <laughs> Hi, Maui. Oh, oh, hindi. I never call him a uh, top FSA. I was always on the pressure train. Momo A train. Hi, Maui. It's just one game, but. Yeah, it's just one game, but I think there's a homer pick. Uh, I think Jared Bahai will run away with the Rookie of the Year award this season. I know we said. We won't talk about Ateneo, but I have to say, you Homer, I Kamawi, Homer, Homer. Type ko na sana sa chat, chat natin sabi ko Kamawi, sabi ko walang Ateneo tayo pag-usapan ni. Eh. Bakit tayo <laughs> with Jared Bahay? Hindi, <laughs> hindi. I have to say lang, I have to say lang, kasi with all the hate, de ba? Even si Kagulangan mentioned this. Uh, we're talking about awards. We're talking. About, it's the start of a season, so I'm looking forward to to end season awards. I think KQ. That's another take. KQ will KQ and you know, and Bai will will both run away with this award uh during the end of the season. Uh yeah, lock maybe lock a hot take KQ. Maybe yeah. a hot take, but uh 
Sige, sige. I'll say na lang si KQ kasi we, we can't talk about uh, Ateneo and UP since we talked about that a lot. But I have to say this also. Uh, if we talked about Lebron Lopez a lot uh, during our UP Ateneo no, segment, uh, we I have to say what KQ did during last Sunday deserves more credit, di ba? I think he was clutch. He scored nine points down, down the line. Uh, so I believe that he will run away with this award, with the MVP award. Huwag na si Bahay, kasi gagalit yung dalawa sa akin eh, na homework pick na naman. So, si Kevin Kiamba will run away with the MVP award uh, without a doubt, I think. Uh, this 22-7-8 and eight line will be a season average or very close to it. Uh, I like what I saw, but uh, it, kadugtong na lang nun, uh, it's concerning to me what I, what I saw with Lasal. I think UP hood also, another, this may honorable mention, I, I think UP could sweep the whole season. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's that's a hot take. Okay. Terbal. Yeah. Huwag uh, natin pag-usapan at rin yung UP. Oh, kasi <laughs> nag-atin yung UP na. Okay, okay, okay. Um, sige, moving on. Last na. Uh, sige. I, I didn't want to add with the major negative one, pero it's, okay it, it's just... Marami pa ako. Oh, sige, sige, sige. <laughs> it's just one game, but Zayn Mahmood is the new SJ Moore of the USD Growling Tigers. Um, there was a lot of you mentioned it, Maui. There was a lot of hype or excitement um, with the Mahmood pick. Uh, he, USD really needed, uh, could have used a big man like him last season, but with um. Their new FSA, Tongkara, playing so well. And I think he played like 30 minutes for the game. Uh, Coach si Coach Pido Harencio also deciding to play si Crisostomo, um, a more athletic, agile um, big that can play forward and center more minutes. Tapos you have guys like Manaytay. Even si Lemit could be like a small ball kind of guy. It's it's going to be hard to find minutes for Zayn Mahmood. And this is not a knock on Mahmood, ha. It's it's really hard to transition then to from the juniors or from like high school to the seniors division, diba? We've seen that in the FEU Adamson game na minama ng Adamson yung FEU. Sometimes it takes a lot of adjustment or some time for these rookies to blossom into um, the stars that they could be. Just an example, Thirdy Ravena in his rookie year, bench warmer, diba? Rode the bench, payat pa siya nun, parang athletic guard lang siya and then got better later on. So that's that's my hot take. He, he might not get a lot of minutes this season. Actually, the, I, I had that, Sami. I was actually really shocked na... He never even saw a, a, any playing time for this USC team. I, I thought na easy is the backup, eh, because they're small. Motong Kara is a small center, so I think if you want someone coming off the bench, you'd also want someone with the same size. You know, it's a big, bulky guy can probably match up with other FSAs or centers. But the fact that he did he did not play is concerning to me, uh, especially. Match up natin si Precious Momoe, di ba? Perfect for him. He can match up uh, this, with Precious you, yeah, with his girth in, yeah. in his size. So I thought this would be perfect. But we'll see. Again, it's a, it's an overreaction. It's an overreaction. SJ Moore. Grabe ka. Huwag naman sana. UST fans, huwag kayong magalit sana. Huwag naman sana. Overreaction lang. Huwag naman sana. By the way, um... He did play, no? He, garbage time na last one minute. He did come in along with Laure. And I would love to see that lineup na Mahmood and Laure both in the lineup. Extra Rice 2.0 na to. Parang Rainer <laughs> Extra Rice 2.0. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, Sam, you know it's bad when you play the same minutes and when you enter only when Echo Laure enters for QSD. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay, Gab, before we end, Mga runner up picks mo for it's just one game, but it's just one game. But Matt Erolon and Matthew Montebon are next for the Adamson soaring Falcons. The two I, have to end, I have to the end with mats. Adamson because I'm so proud. They backed me up, they oh, showed up Maui and Sam. Ako. 
Si yeah, Mantua yeah, din. Minimum. Shout out na si Mantua. Shout out si Mantua. Yeah. Sige, isa naman natin si Royce. But I think for, in terms of uh, polish in playmaking, Matt Erolon and Matthew Montebon are, ha- are gonna have to carry Adamson in the clutch and for stretches in this game when they need offense. Because defensively, they're solid. Uh, <laughs> defensive masterclass against FEU. Offense is where they're gonna struggle. They struggled in the first half. Very ugly game. But in the second half, I told you si Matt Erolon is more than just a shooter. I watched him in Pinoy Liga when he when he was tasked to be the main guy. And he showed me that he could be a main guy for the Adamson Sorry Falcons. He looked good handling the ball, running pick and roll, going to his mid-range. He's not just a shooter. He's not just an outside shooter. Parang, he can go. Parang oh. he score, scored most of his points in the fourth quarter, then, de ba? Parang oh, yeah. On the fourth Eight quarter. He just a bingo. Yeah. Watch on crunch time when FE was trying to make a run. Yep. Just pick and roll over and over again, getting to the rim, getting to the mid range. Uh, anything. Uh, he looks really good, Matt Erolon. and Matthew Montebon also for stretches in the third quarter and even in the first half. Look really good as a primary playmaker. And, and si Royce Mantua, although I think si Roy is more of a hot streak no third quarter, yung niya. But consistency all, all throughout. These two guys, I think, uh, can take on the mantle as the, 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 the next King Falcon. They are next. Uh, I won't be surprised if we see a, how this is, a breakout game for Matthew Erolon and Matthew Montebon where they score, what, 20 plus points. In, in this, the, 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 they have the skill set. I do believe that. Um, Royce Mantua, too. Thank you, Maui, for shouting out. But those two guys, man. Uh, Jerome is not there anymore. Joem Sabandal is not there anymore. But these two guys have proven they are the next King Falcons for Adamson. I loved what I saw from those two guys. Bast, basta talaga, Rasela coach. You can oh, nga, sh- you I, can... I was gonna say, shout out to coach Nash. Basta Rasela coach, you can really trust. Guys. You can trust and, and it's going to be sure that the guards will be very good, very polished. Pero Gabi, yung Erlon call, that's, that, that was really yeah, great. That was a good call. That was a good call. Okay. Um, may pahabol ka pa, Gab? Let's, before we end the show, anything you want to say? Well, shout out ko na si Jake Figueroa. So, okay, I was going to say, Jake Figueroa is going to, is going to be the MVP. But, uh, <laughs> mahirap pag think, may KQ uh, mahirap pag may KQ but Jake Figueroa my goodness he looks so good so that's it for me I yeah, think what? we can call it a day yeah uh, oh one last pahabol shout out to Nick Cabanero I mean w- w- UST got a lot of talent they got Fortsky they got Paranada they got Estacio but Nick Cabanero guess what who who was one of their top scorers nung first game Nick Cabanero so it's still his team that's what's great about it but he looks a lot happier now that he Dark- has teammates that can actually score and contribute. Dark Horse MVP candidate si Cabanera if they win a lot of games. Uh, I think si, si Jet Manuel said that he finally worked on his free throw shot. Di ba? He averaged, I think, 20 points while shooting 50% free throws. So pero that's something may, may to watch out miss for. Siya, eh. May mga na-miss pa rin siya. 4 pa rin siya. Pero uh, let's see if he can improve on that for his pro chances. Okay. So that's it for today's episode. Hopefully, we were able to cover most of the, your favorite players and teams. And before we end, I just like to remind everyone about our Gatorade Ballers of the Week. So I just want to know, sino naman yung Gatorade Ballers of the Week ninyo? So comment them down below. Hashtag Gatorade Ballers of the Week. And maybe we can share some of our Gatorade merch with our commenters. Um Sa, sa show na to and all throughout the season so we're gonna do this all throughout the season weekly we'll p- pick our Gatorade Ballers of the Week and hopefully you guys can also share your Gatorade Ballers of the Week we'll see you again next time see you sa Wednesday meron naman tayong two games and then I think mowa tayo sa Wednesday um, or sorry hindi Araneta pala tayo sa Wednesday mowa tayo this weekend um, big games this weekend also like comment let us know your thoughts Subscribe, share with your friends. See you again next time. Bye-bye. Ingat.